salary. If they don't meet your salary needs, then you need to dip. Dip, okay? Dip. Like, no. Hi everyone, welcome back to D. Renee's The OT Chronicles. If you are new here, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome back, OT fam. I'm so happy to have you. So yeah, let's get into today's video. It's going to be different. It's just going to be like a chat and a chill vibe because that's kind of what I feel I really want to do right now. So let's get into it. Now I am talking to you guys with obviously no makeup, no fancy lights, no none of it. Because this is kind of the content that I want to put out. Like, I don't want to have to sit here and get all done up for a video where I just feel like I want to be transparent. I want to be honest. This is what I look like on a daily basis. Um, it's currently January 17th. Um, it's about 12 o'clock. I am working from home right now. Um, and so I'm doing like telehealth visits. I wanted to kind of come on here and just kind of be transparent with you guys about a whole bunch of different things. Um, the first being when it comes to teletherapy and then in-person therapy. I feel like those are some two big things that you have to realize you are going to be doing in these times that we are in. So as a therapist, you need to be able to kind of fluctuate between both. Um, and I think that's very important to know. I was blessed enough in my level two rotation to actually have to do both. So therefore, when I was looking for jobs and they needed that requirement, I was like, oh, well, box checks. I already have experience doing that. So that really worked out for me. Um, if you are a student right now or you're a clinician watching this and you are struggling with teletherapy, I get you. I completely get you. Um, but you do have to understand that like, it's hard. Everyone knows it's hard. It's really up to us to try to make the appointments, to try to make the sessions as therapeutic and as client-centered as possible. Um, a tip that I have to kind of help you is honestly go into these with like a broad idea. Don't be like so boggled down into like the details because honestly most of the time these families don't have much so you really need to be creative and you need to ask them what do they have and make it work and make it therapeutic and make it work for the roles like you gotta you gotta be creative and so that's something that I really wanted to kind of discuss here because I think it is super important and um yeah let's get into our next topic okay so the next thing i want to talk about is pay um pay 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 so really in the therapy world there are like i would say three main ways of how we get paid as ot's so our first way is like the traditional way salary you work um a certain number of hours which is usually 40 and you get paid an hourly salary um you get benefits and you get um all these different kind of perks from it Another way that you can get paid is called the pay per visit model. So that's currently what I am getting paid right now. With the pay per visit model, you have a higher hourly rate. So it's about 20% higher than what a salary position would be. However, the benefits are like not as good, obviously, because you don't have like a 401k and stuff like that. Um, so another way that we get paid and the final way, I, at least that I know about right now is cash based. So I actually do know a couple of therapists who do cash-based therapy services, which means that they do their services. They are like an LLC or whatever, and they do all that documentation. And um, they have those certifications and they charge patients a price. So like for OT services for an hour, they may charge someone $100. They may charge someone $150. It's kind of similar to like, you know, therapy services. If you want to go see your therapist and you don't have insurance, like you're going to be paying out of pocket. So it's the same kind of thing for OT. So you can do that as well. So personally, I think there are pro and cons with all of them. Um, I have done a salary and I have done the pay per visit model. I have not done cash based. Um, I think cash based is fantastic though, because you don't have to deal with insurance like that right there prime prime okay and i mean some people that do cash base like they do deal with insurances but some of them don't so me if i was doing cash base i would not be taking insurance because 
it's annoying and they have so many kind of limitations within it and it's very annoying so personally I wouldn't do it but you know to each his own um, as I am now getting further into my career and I'm trying to figure out like what I want to do with my life and like what kind of therapist I want to be and you know I want to be transparent with that with you guys because this is hard like being an OT is not for the weak. Um, we do a lot of stuff, we work really, really hard, and we honestly don't get as much recognition as we should. We don't get as much pay as we should. And so that's something that I want to be transparent with you about. Personally, I think we deserve $500,000, half a million. That's what I feel like I deserve. So it is disheartening sometimes when, for instance, um, one of the offers that I first received in North Carolina when I was back in New Jersey and I was just trying to figure out where I wanted to do and where I wanted to go. Um, one of those offers, they literally offered me $55,000 for a salary position. And that was so disheartening because it was like $55,000. Are you kidding me? Like that is just insane. I have a master's degree. I just went through all this schooling. I have my bachelor's degree too, like $55,000. Um, I will tell you, and lovely OT Nancy, shout out to Nancy. She has some stuff on her Instagram page and she's so transparent and I love her content because she was like, you should not, I repeat, not be accepting anything below 60,000. Like, at least that's what I say. I think Nancy said a different number, but for me, you should not be accepting anything below $60,000. Um, I think personally, I didn't even accept anything below $60,000. Like, I'm not gonna tell you what my previous job was um, just because of contracts and stuff like that, but I will say it was more than $60,000. Like, I just can't, imagine going through all of that schooling and then coming out to the only be making $55,000 like who is doing that like no and I want you to understand that like you need to know your worth as a clinician do not let these companies play with you I'm gonna tell you that right now do not let these companies play with you um, and if somebody offers you 55,000 you humbly say I'm sorry but I cannot accept that position how about we negotiate a different salary if they don't meet your salary needs then you need to dip dip okay dip like no I just I don't know and that's something that I'm learning about myself I'm building on my advocacy I'm building on those skills but yeah no do not take anything anything below $60,000 because there are companies out here that will pay you more than that way more to be exact so that's all I'm gonna say about that all right and the last topic that I am going to talk about in like this kind of vlog style like chill with me chat um, is really like just where I'm at and how I honestly feel like I know I did a video on like am I happy being an occupational therapist but I don't feel like I answered that question in that video so this is me answering the question now I would say I am happy to a certain extent I absolutely adore the kids that I work with I work with toddlers I work with honestly I think it's like two years old to nine years old right now and it's like that's the sweet spot for me so like I genuinely love working with my families like the kids make my day every day um, even if I'm having like a bad day I literally will just see a kid smile and just my kid will be like Misty like I'm so happy my kids run up when they see me and hug me because they're excited for therapy and so like that's what makes me happy what does not make me happy about this profession is just the insurance and the documentation like oh don't get me started with the documentation that <laughs> i don't like i don't like it and i know it's a part of our profession but that is outrageous like it literally is outrageous and that's the that's the biggest thing for me that i'm just like mm. I don't know how long I can do patient care because I really just don't like documentation. Like if I could just go and treat patients and not have to document, literally just even seeing the patients for 10 minutes, even you have to document even if they don't show up, like you still document that they did not show up. So it's just like a lot. 
and if I did not have to do that I would be fantastic I would be literally a hundred percent I would be so happy so it's about me especially being a new clinician trying to figure out that balance in between and you know I've only been practicing for like five six months now and I'm still figuring it out like I really am and I just want y'all to be with me as I'm figuring it out like I want to be transparent because I think it is so important for everybody in school like y'all need to understand this um, because nobody told me this like nobody told me this they like to sugarcoat stuff I'm not sugarcoating anything okay this is how real life is as an OT um, we have great flexibility we have great pay when they want to pay you what you deserve to be paid um, we have just great skills that honestly, they don't all have to be used in patient care. I posted a video, I think about a year ago, wow, a year ago, about the 12 different settings that like OTs can work in. Not all of them are patient care. So I am actively exploring those options because I love OT, I love my profession, I'm very happy in the choices that I made in my life to give me the life that I'm living now. Like I'm so grateful for everything that I have. Um, I just know that if I want to be fully, fully happy, I may want to transition out of patient care and transition into a new field with an OT. So we will see kind of what happens with that and where I go, but that is something I want to be transparent about. Um, I really do love my kiddos like they just they crack me up they honestly crack me up and it's just the impact that I get to make on these patients is what really brings me back every day and just having parents like crying because I'm doing something that they were not able to do with their child for so long like I will tell you this one story and then I will end this video but I have been doing feeding therapy with this one kid and literally he was able to eat like an entire thing of chocolate pudding. And I was working with him and his mom at this point, we only had like three or four sessions together, which in OT time, that means like a month. And so when he was able to like really eat that chocolate pudding, his mom just broke down and cried. And because she was crying, I started to tear up too because I did not realize just how impactful OT is I knew it but at that moment that really like showed me I am doing what I'm supposed to be doing right now like I am impacting lives I'm changing lives for the better and that's what I want to continue to keep on doing and so am I enjoying being an occupational therapist yes I am I am making such big changes and differences in the world will I always be an OT yes will I always be doing patient care no I don't know where my OT career is going to take me, but I will tell you that patient care, I think you've got about three to five years out of me. Three to five years, and then we're trying to figure it out. So, I don't know, but yeah, if you stayed to the end of this video, thank you so much. Um, I really like this, like, chat vibe with you guys, um, and I really hope that you gained some gems or some information from this, and yeah, I will see you all in my next video. All right. Bye.